The thing is, we're not alone. We never really have been. And this reality isn't what we think it is. These beings want us to know that our existence is much more than these physical bodies. That we are all one with everything. And what we do to each other, we do to ourselves. Our planet is moving into a part of space that is exposing us to much higher frequencies of galactic energy. This is causing the severe weather changes we are seeing. Increased earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and end time madness. It's only going to get worse. Eventually, this galactic energy will lead to a pole shift in the solar flash, which will be a real wake-up call for humanity. Ultimately, this will be a good thing for us, but it's not going to feel like it at the time. We can have a more positive experience if we can raise our vibration quickly enough to match that of our planet moving through this high vibratory field of space. And that is exactly what this class is all about. Kindness, compassion, forgiveness, acceptance, selflessness, love, service to others. These are all the things that will raise our vibration. I had just given a talk on television in Canada when one of the announcers came up to me and said, you know, if one can believe that this universe is in charge of an intelligent and beneficent God, don't you think he would naturally have provided us with an infallible guide to behavior and to the truth about the universe? And of course, I knew he meant the Bible. I said, no, I think nothing of the kind, because I think a loving God would not do something to his children that would rot their brains. Because if we had an infallible guide, we would never think for ourselves. And therefore our minds would become atrophied. It is as if my grandfather had left me a million dollars. I'm glad he didn't. And we have therefore to begin any discussion of the meaning of the life and teaching of Jesus with a look at this thorny question of authority and especially the authority of Holy Scripture because in this country in particular there are an enormous number of people who seem to believe that the Bible descended from heaven with an angel in the year 1611 which was when the so-called King James or more correctly authorized version of the Bible was translated into English. I had a crazy uncle who believed that every word of the Bible was literally true, including the marginal notes. <laughs> and so whatever date it said, it said in the marginal notes that the world was created in 4004 BC and he believed it as the word of God. Until one day he was reading, I think, a passage in the book of Proverbs and found a naughty word in the Bible. And from that time on, he was through with it. You know, how Protestant can you get? <laughs> now, the question of authority needs to be understood because I am not going to claim any authority in what I say to you. Except 
the authority, such as it is, of history. And that's a pretty uncertain authority. But from my point of view, the four Gospels are, I think, to be regarded on the whole as historical documents. I'll even grant the miracles, because speaking as one heavily influenced by Buddhism, we're not very impressed by miracles. The traditions of Asia, Hindu, Buddhist, Taoist, and so forth, are full of miraculous stories. And we take them in our stride. We don't think that there are any sign of anything in particular except psychic power. And we in the West have by scientific technology accomplished things of a very startling nature. We could blow up the whole planet and Tibetan magicians have never promised to do anything like that. And I'm really a little scared of the growing interest in psychic power because that's what I call psychotechnics. And so we've made such a mess of things with ordinary techniques that heaven only knows what we might do if we got hold of psychotechnics and started raising people from the dead and prolonging life insufferably and doing everything we wished. I mean, the whole answer to the story of miracles is simply imagine that you're God and that you can have anything you want. Well, you'd have it for quite a long time. And then after a while, you say, this is getting pretty dull because I know in advance everything that's going to happen. And so you would wish for a surprise and you would find yourself this evening in this church as a human being. That is the miracle thing. I think miracles are probably possible. That doesn't bother me. And as a matter of fact, when you read the writings of the early fathers of the church, the great theologians like St. Clement, Gregory of Nyssa, St. John of Damascus, even Thomas Aquinas, they're not interested in the historicity of the Bible. They take that sort of for granted, but forget it. They're interested in its deeper meaning. And therefore, they always interpret all the tales like Jonah and the whale. They don't bother even to doubt whether Jonah was or was not swallowed by a whale or other big fish. But they see in the story of Jonah and the whale a prefiguration of the resurrection of Christ. And then even when it comes to the resurrection of Christ, they're not worrying about the chemistry or the physics of a risen body. What they're interested in is that the idea of the resurrection of the body has something to say about the meaning of the physical body in the eyes of God. That the physical body, in other words, is not something worthless and unspiritual, but something which is an object of the divine love.